Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. It's the Clock location. We have James starting as the pink Protoss. Very stylish. Whip starting in the bottom right-hand corner is the gray Terran. This is on Sylphid, looks like. Neo Sylphid. Should be a good one between these two. Anybody's game now. So, uh... Trying to think. It is... So we got... The games are even up 1-1. I believe it is... I think I said best of seven, but I think it is best of five at the start. I'm trying to think what's left in the map pool. Legro's left in that map pool. So I feel like this is a key game for Jamin to win. Because Allegro feels like one of those maps that really favors Whip's style of play. And if that is the follow-up map, could be a, a dangerous match to try to win. So Jayun potentially wants to knock this game out so that he can maybe chalk up, but well, I, I don't want to say like, oh, it's an absolute win, because maybe there could be some proxy gateways or something like that on Allegro, just to kind of not try to, especially if you have the game lead, try to win something earlier that way. But anyway, point being, we got a series. Jane's proven that he can go ahead and beat Whip, especially if he can get some of those, make it into the mid and late game. But Whip showing that he's no slouch and can pull games off Jayun. I'm excited to see how this one turns out in particular because it is one of those... Well, first of all, it's rampless. Second of all, it's one of those maps where Terran can actually sit back and hold three bases. And I think that tends to be the the du jour thing to do on this map is, is to go for that level two weapons, level one armor push. Whip having a lot of creativity, I would not be shocked to see something different, maybe even Vulture Drops on this map because this is a map that has kind of wider open spaces where you can kind of get those vultures into the base, something crazy like that. We'll see what Jane has in store comparatively. Looks like currently he's just going to open up Gateway, skip the initial Zealot, drop that cybernetic score, push tech a little faster, initial scout for Whip making his way to the 9 o'clock location. And with that, we'll know where Jane's located. Second pylon inside base. There for Jayun. We do have the standard supply depot defense alongside that barrack, but skipping initial marine production to get that factory down a little bit faster. There, whip for whip. So saving that bit of resources. The Zealot now marching its way out towards whip space. First marine out, so that marine's going to have his work cut out for him. I think there'll be two marines on the base by the time that Zealot makes its way that direction. I'm also curious to James going, nope, going to go for range here. I was wondering if he's going to skip it and try to do some sneaky tech along that regard. The Marine way out in front. So he's going to have to do quite a bit of retreating to deal. The SCV making its way in is going to spot the first two pylons at the very least. Two Marines now out on the field, and that is going to be it. So two Marines and no defensive structure in the background. So the Zealot could get a lot of damage done. So Whip needs to micro this really, really well. Some SEVs might need to come off the line to buy some time for this Vulture. The Barracks landing to produce a third Marine, one of them down, and the last one very low on health. So that Zealot going to swing around, make a beeline for the SEV line. Let's see if he gets any kills. At the very least, getting some good economic disruption where the SEVs are having to pull off back and forth. The Vulture... Now out. Dragoon making his way forward, able to get in between the lines, but two Marines and a Vulture should be able to deal with the Dragoon, but keep in mind one of them was heavily damaged, so it's getting wiped out nearly instantly. So SCV's now needing to come off the line to provide some support to deal with this Dragoon. The Dragoon causing a lot of harassment. And now just to get something in this bunker, see if Jane is able to, nope, not quite able to get that Marine done. So now gonna exit, but able to create a lot of havoc in the early match. Whip actually handling it pretty well. Dropping that command center. Jayun has his Nexus following. Still sticking to one gate, is going to go ahead and drop his robotics facility behind this. The SEV, I love seeing battle probes. Able to get the kill in the background. And second gateway dropped. And I think with that, Whip does confirm that, yeah, range was not canceled that entire time. Vulture able to sneak out on that corner. Bunker going to take some damage from that corner. And actually, another SCV needs to get there immediately because this is not a lot. So you can see the Marine trying to reposition to the north, trying to distract the Dragoon fire. 
because two Dragoons can take down a Bunker with a single SCV repairing, the Siege Tank getting out, and actually a Dragoon getting taken. So I believe that was that Dragoon that was heavily damaged from the earlier points. So tit for tat on the exchanges. The Vulture able to make, make it all the way around. The Dragoon trying to intercept. But with a bit of micro, yeah, one probe down and confirms that natural expansion's up and manages to sneak out with its life. So mines are being upgraded. Still might be able to get some mines planted out on the field. Zealots joining the fray. This, ooh, is this going to be a bulldog? We have robotic support bay. Let's see if we see a third gate. But shuttle coming online. Robotic facility now up. More dragoons being produced. Whip is sitting on the one factory currently. Has just now tacked that second factory in place. Mines have been laid. Midfield actually spots the shuttle. This is a fake for Jayun currently, though. He's just sending an empty shuttle to create a bit of distraction. I'm curious if Whip is going to fall for it. Or maybe he's just using this shuttle to actually scout. Is that the plan here? So wandering up, it's going to take a bit of base damage. Yeah, I think this is just scouting to skip the observatory. So wandering up, catching the... Getting the lay of the land. So reveals that he went Robo, reveals that it's most likely Reaver, but gets a good amount of scouting information. I don't see a lot of other Protoss do that. Kind of like that play, to be honest. Siege check being researched. I think Whip has to be scratching his head there. Academy being produced. Vulture's hanging out near that 3 o'clock location to see if Jane was going for a quick third. Pylon to help with that wall. Some Vultures looking to go for a backstab. Should the troops move across that edge. But Jane actually looks like, rather than going for that inside expansion, it looks like he wants to go for the expansion to the corner. And currently, the Vultures, if they sneak that direction, might be able to wipe that probe out. Never mind, too late. Nexus drops, so at this stage, it's just going to be able to spot it. Still trying to hunt that probe down. Do get a probe kill, but aren't in position to go ahead and stop that expansion from being built. Mines on the corner should see the shuttle incoming. Let's see how Whip responds. Three sea shanks on the ground. He's still sitting on two machine shops. Has a Goliath to help deal with that. But the shuttle looks like there's no turrets here, so the shuttle might be able to get some damage done, and on top of that, spots the command center. So able to wipe that SCV out, slow that command center down. And actually, with a bit of fire, might even be able to take that command center out. Looks like he's going to focus on the ground troops instead. The zealots being engaged. Huge explosions on the siege tanks. So one siege tank gets wiped out alongside a marine. I didn't even see that marine alongside that tank. So good amount of harassment. Huge amount of disruption at the natural expansion. Slows down the third. And now Jay is going to end up way ahead in grabbing that third. Speed kicking online. So it looks like he's going to get some more damage done at the natural. Trying to get... Does manage to kill two SCVs there. Three SCVs now. And I don't see a Goliath or anything. Finally moving up. So still going to be able to get some damage done. Also able to disrupt gas. So all sorts of SCVs killed. Natural expansion disrupted. Third base slowed down. And Whip wasn't active out on the field, so Jayun actually just going to move up and grab his fourth way ahead in the supply. Jayun looking real strong. Kind of like this style of play from him, where he's kind of being macro-aggressive and really playing on the edge while doing the harassment to force his opponent back. Love to see it. Dragoon marching its way in. Vultures are able to feast a little bit on the probe count. Still going to say Jayun comfortably ahead, both in supply. Actually could grab a fourth if he wanted to. Up to a four gateway count has dropped a Citadel of Dune. Let's see if he makes a transition towards gateway play, or Stargate play, sorry. Towards the end here, plus one weapon is going to come online. We do have three factories in place. Starport and a science facility as well, which usually is an indicator, especially with this additional command center. The command center should help fill in that SCV count. But that should, yeah, allow level 2 weapons to come online. Still no second armory for Whip, so I haven't seen him go for the what is typical for Terran with the double armory play. Now more shuttles. I like this. This is hyper, hyper current meta going for more shuttle heavy play. Although he's not doing the full dedication. I wonder if he's going to stick to it all the way to the late game. But Reavers and Zealots... Looking for openings, some mines being planted along the edge. That does make it difficult for Whip to find territory to actually build his stuff. 
So here I was talking about whip. There's the second armor. I was talking about whip potentially going for maybe some sort of creative drops, but Jayun instead being the abuser of drop play on this map. Additional gateways getting tacked on. Is now cycling out to go ahead and grab that base in the space of it. So in comparison to game one right now, has a much scarier army, army to threaten that natural expansion. Clearing the mines on the front. And honestly, I think Whip is going to have some trouble just holding back the forces that are there, trying to get turrets along that edge corner. But with a little bit of Reaver Micro, this front under dire threat, and I think even just having that threat is going to give Whip pause for thought, certainly going to keep him away from June, June's fourth, potential fourth. Whip tacking on two additional factories. No plus one armor upgrades as of yet. Is making his way to plus two weapons, though. So I think Whip having a little bit of trouble. I think he wanted to take his third much more rapidly than he has. But Jayun, with a good amount of map control, Dragoon's currently all over. And a nice kind of concavity, too, to kill anything wandering out to go ahead and get any sort of scouting information as well. Gateway count is sitting at a pretty nine. No movements towards... Arbiter Tech, though. Vulture is sneaking through. They do not yet have that speed upgrade. Looks like that is being researched. So dropping some mines as they go. Might get a zealot for their efforts. Well, might be able to make their way all the way to the upper right. Cannon warping in. Trying to work. So they're able to get a probe. But honestly, this is nowhere near sufficient to catch up to Jayun. So Jayun, all of a sudden, surging ahead in economy. Is grabbing his fourth. Dragoon's repatterning. I'm actually even shocked those vultures were able to sneak out, giving the uh, Dragoon coverage out on the front. Six factory being placed, but here's the or, wow, six and seven. So whip going all in off two bases. Maybe he'll try to go for this third, but this looks like it is a as soon as level two weapons comes online, I'm going to just start pouring out troops sort of build here and just let that command center build SCVs streaming out in the map. It is possible he'll just use the troop flood to go ahead and establish additional territory. But the thing is, is he's 40 supply down. So even with this push, just with pure gateway units, Shane potentially can stop him. Plus one weapons being upgraded. To prepare for carrier tech, there's the first gateway in the upper left-hand corner. Although whip... Might get some bonus and a, a reprieve here because going for that carrier switch right as Whip is tacking on a whole bunch of troops to go for an attack. Plus two weapons now online. Looks like he's going to wait on plus one armor. Is starting to stage those troops forward. But 160 supply. And yeah, you can see the shuttles with the Reavers along that edge. Plus one weapons not yet online should be somewhere in the midst of these attacks. Whip starting to float forward. It looks like he is floating in that command center to maybe grab that six o'clock location. But getting dropped all over the Reavers on top of that rear siege line, the Zealots getting on top of that as well. And that is just getting absolutely crushed. So Whip immediately gonna have to float this command center back. Is locked to two bases. Obliterating that army now gives Jayun plenty of time to get that carrier fleet up and running. And he still has a lot of troops on the ground to wipe out anything Whip tries to sneak out. And that command center is going to get picked out of the air, so it might be a quick GG after this gets knocked out of the sky. Jayun sitting on four bases. Looks like he's going to try to grab his fifth. Whip still relegated to his two. But now pushing out more troops... He's just going to try to take... Well, I guess he's just going to, yeah, go ahead and move up to that mineral only. Well, not mineral only. Got gas here. Inside three. Mineral only on other maps. Grab that command center. But this is... Yeah, this feels like way too little too late. This would have been okay when Julian was taking his fourth, but Julian's got that fourth up and running and is now grabbing his fifth already. Plus, the carrier switch is happening. Julian up 20 supply. Otherwise. If some vultures sneak through, that might be sufficient, but it looks like they are getting wiped out, and there's cannons waiting for them as soon as they, yeah, you can just see they see the probe line and then instantly explode. 
And a couple shuttles are still alive to go for potential bombs. Maybe even the inside three. Or maybe over the natural expansion that still does not have turret coverage. Whip actually ahead in workers, but mining out a fewer bases. And I expect that to shift. So I do want to point out that Jayun, even though he holds five bases, with the probe saturation, it's not behaving like a, a true five here. But I don't think it matters because Whip is still is still more or less going to be locked to two bases, pulling off all the SCVs here. Not a lot left at the main. Dragoons and Zealots piling in. They're going to go ahead and check that three o'clock out, make sure nothing's there. And Jayun grabbing yet another base. This is what I talk about macro aggression from him. So he doesn't even miss a beat. So he's already already sitting on five bases, technically four, because his main's about to mine out. But sitting on four bases or five bases, is going to go ahead and grab a sixth to instantly start mining again. That might cost him, however. I've seen a lot of Protoss overexpand, basically grab bases that they can't saturate or mine. Jane pressing in with Zealots into the 3 o'clock, thinking better of it because of all the Siege Shank reinforcements to the south. So they're going to draw right back out. Supply count's currently even, actually. The carrier's starting to fill in. And Whip able to sneak in to that third and actually get a, a handful of probes wiped out there. And oddly, again, because of the lower probe count, Jayun actually running into... So despite having all these bases, running into mineral problems. Supply counts even all of a sudden. Did Whip continue the... It doesn't look like... Okay, he did move his way to weapons three. Whip now making potentially movements to grab his fourth. But Whip actually with a supply lead. So Jayun gonna sit back, wait for the carriers to come in, it looks like, to continue. But he's just sitting at the, the 50 workers, so despite having a huge amount of workers, yeah, let's see how, yeah, starting to produce the probes at all of these locations. To fill in that worker count. Maybe he was worried he built too many workers in that last match, and now uh, underbuilding a little bit in the mid-match, which is actually allowing Whip to float some units. So Jayun tentatively pressing to the three o'clock with a ground army that is no longer sufficient to breach which ar bre breach Whip's army. Wow, can't say that for some reason. Upgrade advantage very much in Whip's favor. Starting to pile drive the pure ground units back. Has a lot of Goliaths should carriers join. And now all of a sudden, despite everything going so well for Jayun in the early game, Whip up 20 supply and driving towards the natural expansion. The carriers need to reposition rapidly to provide some defense, and that natural expansion completely exposed. Jayun looking potentially for a counterattack. Whip being, wow, trying to expand twice. He's building there. Whip backing out. Jayun looking to re-engage from the rear corner. Whip trying to find that army so he can take it out, but Whip with the overall unit composition lead, the carriers without any artifacts or doodads to sneak across, they have to flee in the face of these Goliaths. This is by time. It looks like a single zealot able to create some disruption there. Another commands that are being built to float out that direction. But out of nowhere, whip right back in it. Siege tanks peeled off from that previous attack force, able to empty out the base at the 2 o'clock location. And Jane's army getting hunted down mercilessly by Whip. And with nothing left and only four carriers in the air, looks like some Dark Templar are, are going to be in there, but I think there's plenty of commsat to deal with that. Well, is there? Is Whip out of commsat? No, he's got plenty of commsat. It's just a matter of potentially realizing. Splitting off three more siege tanks. Needs to be a bit careful there. Because cannons are actually wiping out that siege tank line. He needs to back up in siege, but he's going to go ahead... Having emptied the uh, unit count there is going to move up to the fourth. But Dark Templar, I think Whip missing a control group. Finally, they're comp setting. These DTs creating a bit of havoc. But Whip pile driving some Goliath sp splitting off. I don't think this is sufficient to deal with this carrier force. Going to halt that additional command center from being built. The carriers do have this is a nice area to engage. Some Goliath reinforcements looking to maybe provide some positioning there. A single carrier, sorry, two carriers and a Dark Templar again trying to provide some defense. But Jayun all of a sudden running out of bases. 
So this base about to get rebreached, the 2 o'clock location was more or less emptied. Looks like he's able to create some havoc to slow down Whip's fourth, but Whip mining on two bases. Jayun mining, I'm going to say this is like a base and a half, because this is going to get wiped out. He is working on the 9 o'clock, but there's, it looks like there's only five or six probes active there. So now it is critical that these carriers do their work at the 6 o'clock location, that Goliath creening in. Dark Templar are really creating havoc for Whip. Wiping that out. Carrier is going to sweep across, clean up some siege tanks to the north. Whip drawing all of his Goliaths back to engage the carriers. Whip with a 25 supply lead. Has reset the base count. So now the 2 o'clock, the natural expansion, and the 9 o'clock are running for Jayun. You can see the minerals are not coming in very rapidly for him. Whip has a bit of a bank to work with. All the carriers have now been wiped out bottom left. Three fresh carriers are out on the field otherwise, but Whip is looking what I thought was an end game, honestly. Whip turning it right around. Huge Goliath Forth. Needs to add on some siege tanks. He's only running on double machine shop currently, getting science vessels to help deal with that. Natural expansion is empty. Main's empty. He does have that command center. Oh man, the Dark Templar. They've been critical for Jayun in these matches. They've just wiped out all sorts of attack forces. Now mixing up the 6 o'clock. Whip, to stay relevant though, needs to start transferring SCVs yeah, out of his natural and start grabbing additional bases. 40 supply lead suddenly for Whip. Marching out on the field, 9 o'clock base. Flooding Dark Templar out to go ahead and create more pressure to keep troops back so maybe he can reestablish some bases. But right now, things looking scary. 50 supply lead for Whip. Dark Templar trying to sneak. They're going to make it by that lower edge. Never mind. One of them getting picked off. Some vultures steaming across, and this is it. So you got five dragoons, two DTs. DTs once again able to cross the line, make it to the six o'clock. Let's see if reinforcing vultures sweep that direction. Not before there's a handful of kills. This is turning into a starvation match. So right now, Jayun just trying to create chaos for Whip, so he keeps this army back so he can get his economy reestablished. Two o'clock base mining. Somewhat thin, restaging, wants to go ahead and make another attack at what will be an empty base for Whip shortly. Whip, still with the overall troop count lead, is approaching 200, but having trouble getting an attack off at any location because he keeps having to draw forces back to deal with Jayun, attacking with much smaller unit compositions at exterior locations. So the stream of troops making their way back to the 3 o'clock, some distance mining in that command center, Interesting how you can see the glow of the SCVs through that command center there. Carrier getting wiped out. James still sitting at a very low supply count in comparison. The carriers, however, making their way to the main, eating a flurry of turret fire. Well over a control group of Goliaths. I think that might be two control groups of Goliaths. Starting to press in. The, the carrier's trying to pull back, and unfortunately they're pulling back towards a mining base. And where I think they wanted to be distracting and out in the field, now it just comsats constantly as he's marching forward. There's my daughter in the background. Five minutes, so... So guest commentary here. So this command center is going to get wiped out. Natural expansion. Going to be hunted down. Okay, my daughter's been convinced to give me five more minutes to end the game. <laughs> so I hope they hurry. Natural expansion getting pressed in. She wants to go to the pool. She cannot though, because she is sick. Poor daughter. So natural expansion doesn't even have resources to deal with. Not a lot left. The carrier is going to try to split across. Yeah, I hope, hope that's the next generation of commentator right there. That would be my dream. Five carriers engaging a huge amount of turrets that are already planted. Jayun actually in the red. Dark Templar once again. Man, these Dark Templar. Re-engaging. Whip careening to the 6 o'clock location to engage the carrier fleet. And this might be the last hurrah for Jayun. As Whip near 200 supply, fighting over one of his mining bases, but... 
after this, yeah, Whip just needs to stage a lot of Goliaths into that location and turn around and wipe out what's here at the Nine and just deal with the Dark Templar as they're coming. There has been a steady stream of Dark Templar, it seems like, for the last 10 minutes from that location. The carrier is able to wipe out some SCVs on the line. Jane down to 14 probes. Whip expanding to the 3 o'clock, basically going where Jane's not. More Siege Tanks and Goliaths peeling their way in. Some An Archon being morphed, but honestly, that just feels like it's uh, decorative. Just to show you that a ball of energy is still there. Whip space going to get wiped out, but I don't... Yeah, it just feels like it's too little too late. As this... This should be sufficient to go ahead and wipe out what's left. Jiyu now down to six pros versus the 51 workers, and a lot of workers now repositioning to the three o'clock. Trying to wipe out the five o'clock, but that's leaving them exposed to the Goliaths. Another carrier wiped out. And there's GG from Jayun. So now whip up. Yeah, it's possible also that there wasn't an upgrade of uh, Sidestorm there with the High Templar. I think we saw Sidestorm dropped earlier in the match, though. Could be wrong. So whip goes up 2 1, and we're moving to Allegro, which is a scary map for Jayun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.